Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So I'm going to hop off the holographic train for a minute and start experimenting with some of my kooky ideas. So what you see in front of you are nine tiles. On those nine tiles, I have somewhat emphasis around the word somewhat, try to sketch a geode. So my plan is, is I'm going to lift these up off this piece of plastic. I'm going to put them on cups. I'm going to try to put a barrier of tape around them. And then I'm going to try to design a geode with resin on these tiles and I'm going to then, when they're cured, mount them onto this board that is behind them. Except for this board is going to be either painted and resined. I don't know. It's I'm working it out in my head. You're going to have to stick with me to find out what I come up with. Uh, this is one of two ideas that I will be trying this week. The second one is going to be a cement geode. So that's going to be fun. But anyway, let's stick with this. First thing I have to do is get these up on cups and put the tape around. And I'm not going to make you watch that. So I'm going to pause you. Okay, so I lifted them up on cups and I just put a tape barrier around. Now I'm not going to leave the tape on permanently. It's just to hold the design in place until the resin stops moving then I will rip it off. So um, probably about an hour will go by and then I'll rip it off. And then the most important thing is, is I have to separate these away from each other so that they don't cure together like that. I'm just keeping them together so that I can design it. Let it start to cure a little tiny bit and then I'm going to pull them apart. So now I got a question today and I wanted to address it. So if you know about mixing and all that, fast forward a little bit until you see me working. Question was, how do you know how much of each color to mix up? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably 10 colors I'm gonna use. I have no clue how much. So what I do is I will get out five smaller cups then what I mixed in because you do not want to leave a large amount of resin together and I will just separate this resin into smaller batches that will stop it from uh, activating well not activating getting hot and starting to cure the more you leave in one place the faster that happens so I will separate it just like this into smaller cups and then I will mix one color at a time as I go. I'm not sure what I need here, so this is how it works for me. You could just mix up the colors and wing it, but I find when I do that, at the end I'm looking for more gold and I have no resin left and too much of lucky green or any other color. So now that I have those separated, I'm going to move them to the side and I'm going to pull out the first color I want to use. And that is going to be the majority of my geode. So I'm going to go with this Emerald City, which is a new color for me. I'm totally pumped about this one. And this is by Resin Art. This is, I'm sorry, by color art. It's a resin art color. And for this, I'm going to need, I'm going to take one of these cups, all of one of these cups, except probably about a half ounce. So I'm going to dump out what I don't need. I know I'm saying this in a confusing way. I don't need that much, but almost all of it. So I'll just put that little bit in a cup to the side. Then for the resin art colors, it's an eighth of a teaspoon per ounce. And I believe I have an ounce and a half. I always overdo it with these colors. Like that's probably enough. But I 
always put a little bit more and then mix them through and that fast this stuff is mixed in it is incredible that is a really really pretty color so now what i want to do i have lucky green from larez i want to mix up a little tiny bit of that and see um I believe it's a little bit darker. Let me just mix up a tiny bit. I want to have different shades of green, obviously. So, yeah, it's a little bit darker. So those are two nice colors to go together. So what I'm going to do now is pour this main area. I have three areas, the center, the middle, and the outer area. So I'm going to take this green here and I'm going to just start pouring. Let's see here, I'll start. right here and I'm just going to pour right over the cracks okay and then I have a little left so I will make it a little bit thicker And the grooves, as you can see, in the tiles are going to have the resin flow crazy different ways, which I was expecting. So hopefully that will add to the interest of this. All right, so that's it for that color for now. I may come back and revisit that. I'll just put this to the side and move on to this lucky green, which is a little darker as I said and I'm going to outline this that I just poured Sadly, no matter what I did, I could not get these tiles to uh, be flush. Like this one's dipping for some reason. I kept putting cups and I just gave up. It is what it is. Whatever happens, happens at this point. So I'm going to take this and just go right over here with it. I complete that circle I made. All right. Then I have some, this is also a new color, green apple by Color Art, AKA Resin Art. And now this one, I need to take another little cup and add some resin in. That's that's how I do it. Okay. So now this one I'm going to do just a very fine line. Hopefully these little plastic cups are not easy to work with. Okay. 
So there's that. And then I'm going to come in over here also. Now I'm not worried about those gold marker lines. Those will be covered eventually. And you know what? I have a little bit left, so I'm going to, no, I'll put that to the side for now. I'm not sure about that yet. So that's that. I need to make some more of the Lucky Green. So another cup. Clean stick. When you use a paste, scrape your stick. Those mix in pretty easy too. See, people like convenience. That's why they like to buy stuff like that. You know, the paste. We like convenience. So here we go. Now, this may be a little trickier. I'm also going to come over here. I just realized it's uh, St. Patrick's Day today. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Now what I want to do is I want to work on the center here. So for the center, I need to make a paste. Um, I'm sorry, a tint. I need to use a tint. So the resin art tints are beautiful they are dry though so you need to be able to break them down with um a little bit of rubbing alcohol so what you want to do is get a little cup put some resin in it and i'm going to use more than that but to start, just put a little resin in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Put some of the tint in. Make a paste. I probably put a little bit too much in there, but it is what it is now. Make a little paste with it. Okay, and then what you want to do is take your 99% alcohol, or I'm sure 90 would work too. The higher the number is, the less water is in it. So that's why we like to use the 99, but I had a hard time finding 99%. Somebody told me they sell it at Costco. I had to get it through my pharmacist, but either way, add some rubbing alcohol in couple of drops worth. Okay. And that's just going to help that powder break up into the resin. Just like so. And then what you want to do is add in the rest of your resin. So I'm going to take this. 
scoop it in there. Now there still will be a little bit of sediment in there. Um, but as I was told, it will, you know, break up and dissolve. Okay. So now I have a tint like resin. I don't know why I said like it is. <laughs> it is a tint. And you just want to mix it up really, really good. So now, just trying to think of where I want to pour it. I'm thinking I might want to keep that uh, white in the center there. Then again, I'm not sure. So let me just pour a little bit of this off here. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. Need a little bit more here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to do a little puddle pour with a few different colors. So right here. All right. Sorry, I had to yell at my daughter to uh, turn that music down. <laughs> All right. Before I go any further, I want to mix up some. Not that way. Come on, Tammy. I have some blanket green I want to use in this. So we need a little bit of that. Also sold by Color Art, a.k.a. Resin Art. All right. That's going to go in the center. It's a nice sparkly iridescent with green shimmer in it. So for that, right in the center, it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens when I pull these apart. That's for sure. And when I start blending or heating the colors, Also going to pour some of this right on the outer edge. When I pull this apart, I'm going to have to clean this area here. I'm hoping that uh, 
once I add some white, it's going to help it out a lot. Now I want to bring in a really deep ocean green. For that, I'm going to use Lorez paste, and it's going to be a transparent. So let's see here. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna fill in a big amount of area with this. All right. Did not want to do that. Also, just so you know, I did um, tape the underneath of these tiles still. Just so everyone knows, look how cool that area looks. I'm not gonna bend my cup really tight together like this so that it makes it more of a finer line when I pour it. I'm gonna try to outline here just around here to connect these two, right? Just like so. And then I'm thinking over here, I'm gonna use some more of this green. So I know once I add some other colors, that it's really going to look fantastic like that. So I'm just gonna, I just poured some more clear in here and I'm hoping that I don't have to add any more pigment. It may be a little bit of a different shade, but that's okay because we're looking for, you know, different colors here. But you can already see by the tiles being uneven and it being able to seep through the cracks a little bit that is creating like these really cool shapes and I'm absolutely loving it already. So see how that's a little bit lighter now and that's perfectly fine. Again, I'm going to try to go right in this cup and go right through here with it. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll go over here too, fill in this area, do a little puddle pour. So we have that. You can also put some of this on it. Just a wee bit. A little more of that other transparent color I made, the peridot. I'm actually going to put some of that back over here. And 
you should see beautiful effects. I'm actually going to put some of this into a paper cup and try to do a very thin line of it here. Then I'm going to add up the gold, mix up the gold and see what we get there. So I want to go right, oh, that came out faster than I was expecting. Right up through here with it. A little faster than I was expecting. And now I just started another circle, another puddle here. So by dripping it by accident, but you know what? That may be a blessing in disguise. We want some creativity in this thing. So let's go for it. Right. Now it's time to get that gold out. For the gold, I'm going to use liquid leaf. Just bear with me one second. my hands dirty already. I didn't think I was touching too much stuff there, but I guess I am. Liquid leaf, make sure you shake it before you use it. All right. Add a little bit of resin to your cup. Couple of drips of the liquid leaf. Got a cat hair on my tile there, I see. Nothing new. Let's get that out of there. I get these sticky gloves off of me too. All right. So now I have the gold mixed up. I'm going to put it in a paper cup so again I can control where I pour it. I'm going to add a little bit more because I think I'm going to need it. Should have did this in a paper cup to begin with. I wasn't thinking. So yeah, as for that background, I'm thinking maybe I'll design it. Just, you know, maybe white and put some resin over it and then plop the pieces of tile into it. We will figure it out together. All right, so here comes the gold now. So I want to go right up the center of this. Right, then I want to do one here, but I'm going to also put some clear, not clear, uh, not clear tinted resin on top of the gold. Do another little one here. Okay. 
going to put some up here. Okay. Put some of this deep ocean green on top of it. Come on. This is a very small one, so I have to be careful. Now here I want to keep adding it to kind of push the shape of this whole thing. See how the shape is changing now of this one? So I'm using the resin to push it and curve it. Okay. You get a lot of depth doing stuff like that. All right. Perfecto. Okay, guys. So now, let's see. I need my gold stick to kind of coerce this where it needs to be. So get it right up to that edge. Maybe a little bit down here. Okay. There we go. And now I feel like there needs to be a line of gold in through here. So again, I'm going to pinch that cup really tight. Maybe. Come on. All right. And then what I can do is have a little more clear and lucky green so maybe I'll go right here with a puddle pour in here also not a very nice puddle pour to hear me That one was a little wonky.
I may have to reassess what I'm doing here. So I'm thinking about this now. And well, we'll see. You guys will find out what happens soon. Um, not sure what's going to happen when I pull these apart. If I let it sit for a while, is it going to be enough? Things like that. Especially these areas that are right on the uh, seam. And I have to worry about my center also. So maybe what I'll do is let this cure. And then. Worry if I'm going to add any glitter or stones, things like that. Now I'm going to take some clear and I'm going to go right in this gold with it. Let's see, we have a little bit left here too. Just kind of testing. That's allowing the gold to, but now right here, What I want to do after I put this little bit more of clear down is I want to mix up one alcohol ink and then I'm going to let you guys go. I want to find a green one that I think would work. I have one called Bottle. by Ranger. So don't need a lot of the clear. I just put a couple of drops in there. I don't really measure it. Alcohol thins out resin anyway, so it's not a big deal if you over add. I feel like the acrylic paint is the one you really have to worry about because that excels. The resin and makes it start curing faster. Even if you add in the right amount, I feel like it still makes it, you know, end quicker than it should. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of clear I have here Add it into this cup that has the lucky green in it. I 
I'll give it a swirl quick. I'm not going to add anything else to it. And I'm just going to pour it around that center. And that'll be it for today. And then I just got to fill in these couple of holes, which is no big deal. Got one here. Honestly, I can't wait to show you like the effects. It looks like ledges and rocks. It's really cool. Wow. Especially right here. Wow. Cannot wait to show you that, guys. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Just going to fill those in. Now, if I go and try to pull these apart now, everything is going to go. Whoosh. So I have to leave it for a while. So what I will do is I will come back and show you quickly what happens when I pull it apart. But so far it's looking really, really pretty. Let me give you a close-up. I'm going to torch it quick first. You know, sometimes you go to make things, and you're like, oh my God, that's an awesome idea. But then you don't think, oh my God, what happens when I pull them apart? <laughs> oh, I'm such a moron sometimes, but you know what? I'll deal with it. I shall deal with it. What am I going to do? All right. I'm coming for you. I can only hope that you could see this area, but I don't think you're going to. Put it this way, this gold here, right here, and what was it? Over here, there's like a lot of depth in that center that you're going to see when it's done. So, I will bid you an adieu. Adieu, adieu. I bid you farewell, my friends. I will see you in the blink of an eye, either with a disaster or a masterpiece. All right, guys, let me tell you, this was a nightmare to get the tape off of. I didn't film it. I had such a horrible time trying to get it off, so there has to be a better way to do that because don't forget, you have to take it off when the resin is still sticky and the cups kept trying to flip off of the, the tiles kept trying to flip off of these little cups. If you were to do it now, I was stupid about this. You need to add probably something bigger, like this size cup under each one. So there's more places for it to balance while you're wiggling, trying to get the tape off. Anyway, total nightmare, but I got it. And I think that so far it is going to turn out pretty amazing. Now, when I display this on this white board, it's not gonna be piled together like this. The whole point of doing the tiles 
separate tiles is to spread it apart and have a little tiny groove in between each one to look like the image is broken up. But for designing purposes, I need to keep them squished together, right? So that the design comes out. So everything lined up pretty well, except for right here, my table told you the house is slanted. So it moved a little bit right here in the lines like this gold line is continued up here. Not a big deal. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to be filling in this with white resin and I'll put a little gold here and you won't even notice it. But the next thing I want to do is outline where my center is going to be. So right now you're looking at this. Let's see. That going this way, the way I'm looking at it is the way it will be displayed on the wall. So you're looking at it upside down. All right. So what I want to do is take my gold Posca pen, which by the way, Karen G, thank you so much. I could not tell you how happy I was to get these Posca pens, the, um, they have a little bit of glitter in the paint. Absolutely love them. Thank you very much for these and the mold and everything else, your donation. Thank you so much for sponsoring my channel. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. So I just want to mark off my center here with a little bit of gold lines. Now, I was looking at this and here's how I want to do this. I want to start and I'm not going to make you watch all this. Just trying to give you a little insight of where my thought process is. So this is my center here. So just want to do a little gold lining with my pen. Okay, and then I need it to continue over so it's one continuous path. And then I'm going to bring it down here. Come down here a little bit. And then go out that way. I'm going to pick it up over here. What I like to do is I trace over the line twice so that it's a little bit brighter. Sometimes even three times. Depends on how it comes out. See now this here. Um, no, let me concentrate where I'm going here before I start talking more. So I'm going to bring it down and I want to follow around here just to give it a little definition. All around here. And I'm going to use this little bit of gold that was in the tile from the resin. And carry it onward up this way. Okay, this is where it's going to meet right here. And come over. Actually, no, we're going to come over this way right here and then meet up with that. All right. And then I'm going to carry it onward. Uh, 
let's see. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just come down this way. Because I like this line here. I don't want to go through it. And then I'll do another little one here. All right. And then what I'll do is go back and trace that. So what I'm going to do is put a few lines in and then I'll come back with the next step. Okay, guys, so I didn't overdo it. I just added a few lines here in the center. And now what I need to do before I go any further is make some crystals for the center here. And I'm thinking maybe up in here. I'm not sure though because it's really pretty. It has a lot of depth. So paper plate, cup, diamond dust. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's. I have it listed in the link below uh, under materials for Amazon. It's very sparkly and pretty. Alcohol ink. A few drops. Popsicle stick. Give her a whirl. Spread it out on the paper plate so that it will dry and not clump up into one big ball. It still may clump a little bit, but try not to overdo it with the alcohol ink. You don't need much, a couple drops. All right, so now I have pretty green. Glass, basically glass glitter that... Uh, I can use in my geode. I'm just going to let it dry for, I don't know, about an hour. And then I'll be able to use it in resin and everything. It will not run. You can do your rocks like this also. And uh, so let's move on to the next step once this dries. All right, guys. So on to the next part. Let me just get you the right way here. Um, so what I did was I mixed up a little bit of resin, just enough to do my white area here, fix my gold and add my green crystals that you just saw me make. Here's the thing now, if you were to do the white, put your crystals in and then add clear everywhere. The clear is going to make stuff move. So I have to do this in steps. So what I'm going to do is add the white, gold, and the crystals, let that dry, and then I'm going to do a flood coat to bring it all to a level height so that it all lines up. Now, I do not have tape around the edges this time um, because I'm not holding a design, really not trying to hold a design on this, I'm going to call it a canvas. It's okay if the white drips over a little bit or if it moves, as long as it doesn't move this way. And even if there was tape, it wouldn't stop it from moving inward. It would be my table being off. So... With that being said, let's jump right in. So I'm going to do the little bit of gold here I have to fix first. And this is just the liquid leaf again. And 
you'll see here I got a nice big scratch in it today I'm so mad but that will be fixed once I put clear over it it'll fill it right in so very carefully I'm going to just add this gold a little at a time because I don't need a lot and I need to make this gold line match up with that other one I don't know if you remember me telling you guys that this one moved well this one moved actually so now they don't line up so I have to apply this and thicken thicken up make them look right basically so I want to make sure this is lined up really good and what I'm going to do is just come right over here where this is and kind of blend it in so that it looks like it's a continuous line and I may just go around the whole thing again just in case this gold, even though it's the same one that I used here, I may have added a little more that time and this might be lighter because it looks a little lighter. It may dry darker. I didn't pay attention to that. So either way, it'll look like it belongs. So just a really thin amount. Don't need it to be anything crazy. And then I'm also going to go this way. So now it looks like it comes over here and continues up. Now I will say, and this is a little tip for you, I had to remove the back, the underneath tape because there were drips and when you're doing multiple layers like this you don't want to have multiple layers of dried drips because it's going to make it really really hard to remove so what you can do is just flip it over use your heat gun to heat up those drips and the tape should peel right off another thing i noticed is regular painters tape the blue tape that we use does not work good all the time on ceramic tiles. So what I'm using this time is foil tape, which is extremely, um, an extremely adhesive type of tape. It has a lot of adhesive on it. So just looking at this now, I kind of like this little hole here. So I'm just going to kind of do this. And I'm not worried about the sides of these tiles, guys, because they're going to be going down into resin. So I don't care if they're covered or not. All right. Just like so. So now I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to get my white. This white is Angel White by Lorez. And I'm just going to cover everything that is white. All right. When I get to uh, get close to this line here, the gold line that I just did, I'm going to kind of stop right about there. And then with the stick, just kind of smear it up to that line. I don't want it to pour over it. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the white areas. I won't bore you with that, and I will be right back. Okay, so I have all my white on except for one area here. I just noticed while I walked over. good enough for now all right so now I need to add my pretty little 
crystals I made out of the diamond dust. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take just a tiny bit of clear. And I'm going to put it in the area where I want these things. Now, diamond dust, it is important to know that it will lose its shine if it goes underneath the resin. So what I do is almost use this resin as a paste. So I put a really nice thin layer here, and then I will sprinkle it in. Now, some is still going to sink in, but it's okay. I will keep sprinkling it until it no longer sinks in. So you don't need a lot of resin. I probably have way too much on here. I'm just trying to wet it a little bit. So just push it off over the side. And then I want some over on this side. Get some of that off of my stick and slowly work it backwards into this really fine area that I have. You could also use a paintbrush to do this, but I don't want to ruin my paintbrushes. I've ruined a ton of them and I have to stop doing that. So just going to go nice and slow with the stick. Right. And it's okay if it gets outside of the line a little bit that I drew here because I did get some resin outside of this line. So it's going to stick in other places outside of where I want it, but that's okay. So I'm just going to take this and lightly sprinkle it in that area. Just like, not even sprinkle it, just drop it. And hope that a majority of it stays in the area that I want it to stay in. All right. I'm trying not to stick my finger in the resin. All right. So you see the gist of this part. So what I'm going to do is pause you and finish putting the crystals where I want them. Okay, so that's it for this part. I need to let this dry so that tomorrow I could tip it over, get rid of all the excess, and then we move on to the next step. But I do have some leftover resin, so let's make a heart magnet. All right, let's make a heart using the white that we have. A little bit of gold we have and let's try another one of uh or two more of Cherie's creative colors here i think she has a dark purple over here she sent me i want to try that out i've been wanting to try that so we'll give that a whirl And we'll use some clear, see if we can get any special effects going here. So I know this is a lot of resin left over, but it is what it is. I don't want to start a bigger project and I don't feel like pulling out molds right now. So do a heart. So this color is called dark purple and it looks beautiful. Oh my God. So let's give it a try. This resin's really heating up now. It's getting thick. You guys see that? It's like a very dark purple. Alright, 
so here we go. First thing I'm going to do is put down some clear, not all of it, some of it, because then I'm going to put the white on top of the clear and then some more clear on top of the white. Here's the first bit of clear. So I'm going to use my stick to mush it around. Need a thin layer. There we go. Now, some white. save the gold till the end as I normally do here's that dark purple oh I love this color I'm gonna have to get some of this that's pretty I'm gonna do what I call what I've dubbed an X pour, EX, or the letter, no, <laughs> EX, X, like the letter X. Or we could go with an X, like an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. Why not? And what that is, is taking my little stick and Xing it out. Get that bad juju out of your life. All right, so here's where the clear is going to come in now. Getting really thick, people. Getting really thick in here. Get a little bit there, or a whole bunch there. <laughs> Way too much resin. <laughs> I'm sure you guys realize that. It's pouring off the side. Yeah, who cares, right? Right? A little more white. Jeez, I didn't think I had this much white left. I would have made a set of coasters had I known. <laughs> Here's the white. So now it's time to blow it around town. <laughs> By the way, guys, oh my God, I can't believe I almost forgot. The big cabochons I've been using, my local Dollar Tree has them. I couldn't believe it. I just paid $10 for a freaking bag. I was so mad. Gonna place another cup under this, maybe just to stabilize it a little bit.
All right, that's the first step. Now I'm going to stretch some of these cells here. Oh, I melted my cup. All right. Make sure I get my edges on this. I really didn't want to get it up on top of the canvas, but I just put a bunch of swirled resin right there. I wasn't going for that, but whatever. That's pretty cool. Now let's get the gold in there. <clears throat> let's see. First, let me torch it. When you're making these hearts, watch the edges of them because the resin tends to drip over thick in some areas and not in others. So just take something and kind of go around the edge a few times before it gets really, really thick just to kind of clean it. I have something right in here. Surprise, surprise, Clyde here. All right, leave a torch one more time. Lots of air bubbles. It's really pretty, these colors. Once it's cured, you'll be able to see it a lot better. So now, take some of this gold. I'm going to go right through the center here. How do you like those apples? Hmm? More there. And why not? All right. Here is the heart. I'm going to get that light now. If you can see that purple, it'll look better in the daylight. Lots of pretty little cells. I like this area right here. That is uh, pretty cool. And then here are those pretty little crystals. And the white part. So we'll come back for the next step. Look at the edges of this. It's doing some really cool wisping. Now I could pull it out a little bit, but a geode doesn't wisp out into the air. <laughs> so we're going to just leave it alone. You ready? So I'll be back, guys. Okay, guys. So this is all dry. Just figure I give you a little close up without the light on. So now, what I need to do is do a top coat over the entire thing. You 
Okay, and what I'm going to do is just put some resin on each tile and cover them. I'm not going to tape them off or anything like that. I'm going to keep them separate just like this and um, let them cure. And then we're going to move on to this next part of designing this board underneath. So let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do two of these with you. Uh, because the rest will be the same and I chose one that has the crystals and one that doesn't so that you can see how I apply the top coat to each of the pieces because I do one a different way than the other. All right, so I have 10 ounces of stone coat countertop epoxy, not the art resin that I am using. People ask, why do I choose that over the art resin? Just because it's a little cheaper it's expensive to run a channel so i try to save money where i can and i feel it works awesome i mean all of their products are awesome so if i could save you know 10 15 a gallon then i'm going to do it it still has an extremely long working time and it has you know all the stuff that the art coat has i believe the art coat has a little more uv protectant in it but you know i'm fine with this it works good for me. So I guess it's all on pre uh, personal preference. So anyway, I have nine tiles. Now here's a little tip. A tile requires, a standard tile requires one ounce of resin. Usually I calculate at one and a half or one and a quarter at least, just to have a little bit in case I want to change or add a color. But per the calculator, it's one ounce each. So I have nine tiles I made 10 ounces some of these are not going to have resin over the entire thing like this one with the crystal because I took my time and sprinkled it on top because as I mentioned earlier resin tends to dull uh, diamond dust so I will not be pouring it on top of this area. So that's going to save some too. So I might have been okay with nine ounces, but I made 10 just to be safe. So for the typical tile like this that has no gems or anything like that on it, I'm just going to add some resin and cover the entire thing. I will be using my hands, but to keep my cleans, my hands clean and not waste a pair of gloves right now, because I'm going to be shutting off my camera, I'll do it with the stick. But I prefer doing it with my hands. I just feel like it saves a lot of time and I feel like I could spread it out more evenly, okay? but you don't need to watch me do all this. So I would spread it out. And as for the sides, let it drip over and just smooth it out and you're good to go. Okay. You come back and torch and all that good stuff, blah, blah, blah. Now for this one here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it up to these rocks or glass shards and work my way outward. Okay. So I'll spread it right up to those rocks, making sure not to cover them and then go over the sides as well. Now, if my tiles were going to be curing here, I would not have these cups here sticking out like that because what it'll do is the resin will drip and it'll form a little ridge on the side that you're gonna have to cut off. You just wanna make sure your cups are always underneath invisible you don't want to be able to see them sticking out all right so i'm going to spread this one right up to this other part here and then do the sides and all that 
and move on. So I'm going to coat all my tiles. I'm going to let them cure and then it's time to work on this board. Before I start this next piece of the video or part of the video, I want to explain what I pour on a lot of the times. And for me, it makes my life so much simpler. You are looking at a piece of shelving. Yes, you heard correct. A piece of shelving from Home Depot. Now, this particular piece is made by Blue Hawk. The dimensions were 36 inches, so three feet long by 15 and three quarters wide by just over a half an inch thick. Here's the kicker. It's already primed, so I don't have to do anything to it. This is the lazy man's way to pour, I'll tell you. The only part I have to prime is where I had them cut it in half, okay? But besides that little edge there, this is all, all primed, the whole thing. And it works like a dream for resin. So the piece cost me $10 and I got two huge pieces out of it. Uh, I have an 18 inch long by 15 and three quarters wide canvas. Two of them for 10 bucks. You cannot get a canvas for five bucks that size, a good quality canvas. So what I need to do is tape off the back of this and I will be right back. Here is another little tip that I learned or trick I should say from Lisa Wyatt Art. Check her out, she's on YouTube. She, instead of using a bunch of tape to cover the back, will put a piece of wax paper right in the center and then tape it down and around. Therefore, you save this whole area because me, I don't just do my edges because when I do that, I tilt the canvas, I do something and there always ends up being a resin spot right in the center. So I cover the whole back. I want it nice and neat. So this saves a lot of tape. You get this right at the dollar store, wax paper. You could put um, parchment paper, whatever you have there. But uh, I think it's a really big money saver. Okay, so I taped off the back of the piece. And what I went ahead and did to save some time is I just slapped on some thick bodied, heavy bodied white acrylic paint. I used the golden brand, titanium white. All right. I just put it on there really sloppy. What I want to do is create some texture in the paint. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take pieces of wax paper, okay, and I'm going to just lay it right on the wet paint, hold this or press this down, and then I'm going to lift up, okay, and I have some nice texture going on in the background. It's lifting off some of the paint, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to use this again. It's all right if you keep using the same piece. I'm just trying to create a little bit of a pattern on the back. Whoopsies. Okay, just to add a little more interest, should have probably used more than four cups to hold this thing up. All right. You could use anything. You could use bubble wrap. You can use whatever you want. So I'm just taking a look at it from over here. 
and I like that. So what I'm going to do now is let it dry. All right, I don't want to create too much texture because I have to put resin on this and I don't want it poking through the resin. So just a light texture. You can do this with a piece of cut up sponge, uh, tons of things, tons of things. A, pops, a popsicle stick, whatever you hand, have it on hand. So I'm just using my little embossing tool to go around and dry the paint. Now, you can use your heat gun, but you have to be very careful because it will make the paint bubble. Um, but you can use that to your advantage and create texture in a paint that way also by making little bubbles because you hold it in one spot too long. So if I were to, even this thing, if I were to hold it in one spot too long, it would start bubbling the paint. But it dries pretty quick. Like this is all dry. All dry. I also did a little texture on the sides too. Because where they cut the shelf, it is pressed board in the end. Although it's encased by whatever they encase it with. Um, when they cut the board, it was had a lot of texture to the wood so that's why I did a little texture up here to have it all blend in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some resin, some clear resin, and I'm going to add a little bit of Blingit Green that is made by Color Art. Okay and that's going to give just the tiniest hint of iridescent green in the clear and I'm also going to add in some blingit gold sparkle so we'll have a little goldy greeny tone to our painting okay okay so I have my resin all mixed up using stone coat countertop epoxy not the art coat just the regular uh, countertop epoxy works great for me get way over an hour out of it and I just love it if you're interested in purchasing any of stone coats products they have diff uh, several different types of resin they have pigments they have glitters whole bunch of stuff I have a code down below for ten dollars off of a hundred dollar purchase so now I'm going to add some uh, of that blanket right into my resin. And I don't want to have too much sparkle, just a nice subtle sparkle. So I'm going to start off with, these are little wooden taster spoons, one of each color. and see how much that adds. So there's the iridescent green. I'm sorry, the blingit green. And this is the blingit gold sparkle. Very pretty. Let's try that and see what we get. I'm mixing it really nice and slow until it gets down into that resin. You should always, always wear a respirator and gloves. I do not. This is my personal preference, but the safe way is to Be safe. <laughs> nice. I'm just mixing this through good. I got a nice shimmery clear. Maybe too shimmery, but we'll see once I get it on there. Let me bring this up there so you can see just how pretty it is. 
hopefully you can see. See that nice sparkle. Isn't that, that's like art porn right there, all that resin. Look at that. I love it. All right. So the purpose of this is I didn't want to have a plain white background, but I also didn't want to take away from the tiles by having too much of, of something on the background. So let's see how this does. I may have just added way too much. And it's probably going to cover up my texture, but... Oh, there's not much I can do now, is there? So, as you can see, a little bit of that stuff goes a long way. I have Leslie Onstadt is the creator of these beautiful colors. I call her the Mix Master Extraordinaire. Um, I have her YouTube channel listed. And that's where you will see her using her beautiful products. And then I also have the website where you can order them listed right under the material list. The first item listed, it says colors I've used. Unless I'm, I don't think I changed it recently. It's there. They'll look for it. It's colorart.com. The resin colors and these bling it colors are listed under the category of resin art pigments. And then she also sells primary element products, which are, um, are vivid colors that are for acrylic pouring. And she's coming out with some new things. And let me tell you something. Mix Master Extraordinaire. That woman is amazing with the things that she comes up with. I mean, think about it. She invented a dry paint system. A dry mica, uh, you know, we buy pastes and stuff like that for a resin. She invented this dry paint system that goes into her resin, and it looks like the metallic pastes. I mean, it's gorgeous. So... Check it out. It's all listed below. I still need to get some gloves that fit because these are not. <laughs> so I'm just kind of spreading it out with my hand and then we're going to let this cure overnight and then we're going to start doing the final step to get these tiles on there. And I, I put way too much of this in there, so you really can't see my texture now, but it's okay. I could always go back and add some texture into the resin right when it's getting thick. Um, the way you do that is you wait for it to get really nice and thick and maybe take a piece of plastic and just kind of keep going like this in it. But well, I'll probably just let this dry now the way it is. Another thing that's awesome about her colors is you do not need a lot. Like you saw how little I used of this and it just was too much. Especially the resin art colors. You only need an eighth of a teaspoon, which is one of these level flattened out that's all you need for an ounce of resin so they last a while which is important to us because we're always so damn broke seriously i'm about to sell a kidney for a gallon of resin soon right so i think we're pretty good here
making a mess, but I'm pretty good. I'm going to take my glove off over the canvas so it could drip right there. Now I'll give it a torch. Sometimes I'll let it sit for like five minutes before I torch it, just to give the air bubbles a chance to get up to the top. This way I don't have to do it multiple times, but well, I still do it multiple times, just not as many. And especially with shimmer like this, it's hard to see the air bubbles, so I have to go over it a few times. And do your sides too. You get bubbles there too. Alright, so I'm going to applaud you guys and move on to the next step after it cures. Okay guys, so we've come to the last part of this whole long process. This is all cured. I have my lights off because it's too shimmery. Okay, I'm going to put them on at the end and show you uh, what it looks like. But I've now mixed up some stone coat countertop resin. And what I need to do is put a very thin layer over the top of this. And that is going to work as the glue to hold my tiles on. So let me just strap my gloves on. And we will get started. Now you are going to be seeing the image upside down. Once I have all the tiles in place, I will show you where they are going to be or how it's going to be displayed. Then again, the person that purchases it can display it any way they want. It's just the way I think it looks better. I just put that in there for now. I don't want to have so much that it's floating. Now I just moved and I don't know if I'm in frame. Let me just spread this out quick and I'll make sure you guys are in frame. So, or that I'm in frame. <laughs> I'll tell you, my tongue gets tied all the time. And it's not that I'm nervous, it's just, I don't know, I guess my tongue is fat. God couldn't, everything else is fat on me. You think God give me a skinny tongue, jeez. Really. And some gloves that fit. <laughs> I really need to order some gloves. It's just not on the priority list, you know. Between regular life. I have a bunch of raccoons I'm feeding in my backyard that I'm in love with. I'm hoping they're going to have babies so that I can steal one and raise it as a pet. Although my husband doesn't know that yet, nor will he have a say. They're so damn cute, though. Oh, my God. But they uh, try to come right in my house, and it's like, no, I got kitties. You guys will not get along. Clyde's used to be in, you know, the center of attention, so God forbid I show any kind of love to anything else. All right, so I got a nice even coat on there. I've Going along the sides a few times here. You know, these gloves are an embarrassment. I really need to get my shit together. You know what it is? Things like this are not important to me. Talking to you guys and just making something, those are the things that I care about. I don't care about supplies. I don't care about gloves. It's just making a connection with you guys and... Hopefully making something that's watch worthy. 
All right. I'm done with that nonsense. Let me get a different pair of gloves. So I'm going to torch this really quick. You know, the your best friend when it comes to resin is sunlight. You can bend down kind of to the side and you can see where everything is, where the air bubbles are, where the, if there's a dust particle or a cat hair or dog hair. It works so much better than a flashlight. You know, let me use my big torch for this because this is just ridiculous. There it goes. That's called a flare, a flare up. And what happens is these, these torches are not meant to hold on an angle. They're meant to be used straight up and down. So that's why that happens sometimes. It happens the most when it's a brand new tank of gas. But once it gets down to about half, then uh, I just put a hair in there, Jesus. Then it stops happening. I'm just looking around for any kind of dust bunnies and all that, you know, how it goes. Just wanna make sure I get everything out before I lay those tiles in. Believe it or not, too, you could see some of the uh, texture through the shimmer. Not much, but I was able to see some of it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for a minute to let the remaining air bubbles pop up because I don't want to torch too much once the tiles are on there. So I will pause you for one second. Okay, so it's time. I'm going to start assembling the puzzle. Now I want to leave a little bit of space in between each tile. I have them here over to the side, lined up the way that they're supposed to go on. But once I put them on, I'm going to be able to move them around because the resin is on there. So I'm going to start right about there. One thing to note, I will be doing a light top coat on these also. I'm not going to show it. I'm just going to put some clear resin on and just smear it on the top to make sure everything is crystal clear, clean, and although they are pretty much like that already, there's a few little spots that have a some... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Dust particle, like little tiny spot. Little tiny, tiny things. All right, let me just get these on here. Kept seeing a hair and it's not a hair. Jesus. Actually losing it, I think. That's something. I had to get that. These have been sitting overnight, so I'm just going to lightly brush them off over here. Like I said, they're going to get coated, so in the end it won't matter. I'm thinking about that far. I'm just going to lay them down first. I'm 
they're a little dirty on top because I'm touching them with my resin fingers. So there's smears and stuff right now. Pay no mind to that, please. It will not look like that in the end. All right, so now what I'm going to do is pause you while I get these into place. All right, so I have them all on there. Now what I'm going to do is I put some resin on them just a little bit on the tops. So you can't see it. I've already rubbed it in, but I'll do a couple for you over here just so you get the gist of what I'm doing. have only a little tiny bit of resin left so I'm just touching the tops rubbing it on there obviously I'll have to remove things like that piece of green and put the tile back into place all right but as for the rest of it it is done baby I absolutely love how this came out I look forward to doing more art in this style. Okay, so you just take a look. Any spots I may have missed. I'm gonna torch quick and then give you a close up. I transferred some of the green from the uh, rock area over here. I'm just trying to pick it out here. All right, so a quick, quick torch. Don't forget to get in between the grooves. And I'm going to step back and take a look at this to make sure it's even. If it's not, um, which I'm sure it's off a little bit, then I'm just going to slide them around until they're where they need to be. I swear, when it rains, it wets. If, when, it rains, <laughs> when it rains, it pours. And my torch ran out. Jesus. I'm like grandma torch over here. Take it forever. <laughs> right, that's good for now. I got to get the rest of the crap out of there that I contaminated with my dirty gloves. All right, guys, here it is. Lights on. You can see all the sparkle in the white there. That's it. That's my nine tile geode art. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please, 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 if you haven't already, please subscribe. Oh, I have a shout out to do. Uh, a friend asked me to do a shout out, so I'm going to shout out LaCranche Creations. I will link her channel below. She's uh, making some silicone molds now, and she does some other uh, resin artwork. So stop on by and give her a check. Check her out. Um, and also a channel named Sherry's Life. Uh, she was referred to me by a friend, and I checked her out, and I love her artwork. It's uh, acrylic pouring. So check them out. All right, guys, if you have any questions, leave them below. And as always, happy pouring. Oh, and yeah, I can see that my tiles are a little bit off, so I'll fix those. Have a great night, guys.